cloud. Okay, so we're now recording. So welcome to a um, ULVLC session, library instructional tech session on Google Suite for workflows. Um, I just dropped the link to this presentation in the chat, and here it is as well, if you need it for later. Um, so y'all know me, I'm the online learning librarian, but I brought someone with me today, Rachel, um, who uh, has her title on here. Y'all all know Rachel, but I just want to acknowledge that Rachel is uh, the queen of Google. And so I asked her to come with me. Um, she's very organized and great at developing workflows using Google apps. So she's going to talk about some stuff and I'm going to talk about some stuff. Um, so Rachel, you're going to start, right? Yes. Well, hi, everyone. You know me. Um, so <laughs> first of all, why Google at work? Like, why should you consider using Google Suite products? I'm going to call them products, even though technically for us, they're free. Um, <clears throat> why should you consider using these in your work? My favorite one is number one. So collaboration, right? It is easy to uh, share, comment, suggest, edit, all those sorts of things with different Google apps, products, whatever you want to call them. And we'll display that in kind of a variety of ways. It is to me so much better than like passing around, for instance, docs. It's so much easier than passing a Word document back and forth and having to save new versions and make sure we're all on the same version. Um, integration, they work really well together. And you can see that as we go along again, a lot of these things can be linked together, embedded in kind of some sophisticated ways that maybe you haven't um, realized before. Saving your changes in most cases save automatically to the cloud. I have my little asterisk here because not everything will do that. Sometimes there is a submit button or a save settings button, something like that. But in many cases, I would maybe even say most cases, saving is automatic. And then support is a great thing about it. You should use it in your work because the UNCG ITS supports it and is willing and able to answer questions about it. Um, so I think those are all compelling reasons to consider using it. Okay, I think I'm talking about this. So some of y'all were in the last one, the last library instructional tech session we did, I used the same template uh, to make it easy. Uh, but we talked about some similar stuff, but just some reminders and some additional information about um, UNCG things to help with Google. So Rachel mentioned this, but just to reemphasize this, Google EDU is a UNCG supported tool. So some things that might help you with workflows are not UNCG supported, so you kind of use them at your own risk, but Google is. Um, that does not include add-ons or integrations. Um, so you can be sure to check with ITS, um, air it to make sure they're safe and approved um, and if you feel like it's okay. We will be talking about some add-ons today um, that I suggest and I find safe to use. Uh, so a big add-on that uh, we're going to talk about um, throughout and I'll model it a little bit is that there is an add-on for accessibility um, on Grackle Docs and Slides and there's a lot of different add-ons for polling um, and so on. So again, we'll kind of model a couple of those as we, as we go along. Another nice thing about um, Google is that Everything is shareable by links. You know, Rachel kind of mentioned that. Um, and one thing you can do, and you've probably noticed, is that um, it creates these very long links. So we do suggest using Go links. Uh, so you all can create Go links, which are UNCG's versions of tiny URLs, right? Shortening the URL. Uh, we did this in our presentation, right, to send you to these slides. And you can go to go.uncg.edu and go from there. Um, all, another thing about, mo uh, about Google is that it's very mobile friendly. There's an app for everything we're talking about today for your phone. Um, this is not me at all suggesting that you need to put work apps on your phone, <laughs> um, but I have found it's nice in terms of like reading notes, opening agendas while I'm doing other stuff, right? Um, so again, take what you can and it is safe for your phones to download these apps. Um, so yeah. And then, yeah, as Rachel mentions in the chat, um, if you do use Go Links, go.uncg.edu, it does create, yes, a, a assessment of your links. So you can go there and see, you know, like if you shared something for a conference or an agenda or anything like that, it shows you how many hits that it gets moving forward. Um, so it can be good also for websites. And we're going to talk about um, Google Sites a little bit on this. Um, so you can use it for that as well. And it gives you some basic assessment on that. Okay, so we talked about this accessibility. So this link right here is to um, their accessibility commitment. Google is a for-profit company, um, as um, you know, Rachel kind of mentioned that uh, we're calling them products because though it's free for us at UNCG, um, they're not a nonprofit open source company. They are very uh, 
closed source, let's say, um, in terms of how they work and their algorithms, but they do have a page in terms of accessibility, as well as VPATS, uh, is that voluntary product accessibility, accessibility templates for each product. So it shows you what's accessible, what they've done to make it accessible. There's also the add-ons Grackle Docs and Slides. Um, you can Google that and it's an add-on that you can put on your documents and your slides where it will check over your Google Docs and your Google Slides and bring up any accessibility issues, including color contrast, headers, um, if you're not doing alt tags in the images, things like that. Uh, so it does work really well um, with that stuff. Okay, so here's what we're going to cover today um, and more, right? There's like a ton of Google products. So, you know, it's like when Rachel and I were developing these slides, we came up with the ones that we thought were like the most useful. Um, do keep in mind that we're really trying to focus today on Google for work, right? Like Google to help y'all be the most efficient workers as possible. Uh, so we'll demo some stuff, but this is also a small group of us. Uh, so definitely stop us, ask questions in the chat. Um, we're gonna have some like time to talk through products, to think through ways that, you know, we could use them more effectively together. Uh, so, you know, keep in mind that we're not the only experts. Y'all use this stuff every day too. So to get started, we're gonna kind of start with the basics, right? Which is going through the format of Google Drive and how the sharing works um, and including docs and slides. Um, so to get started, we're gonna go into Drive and y'all y'all are gonna see inside of my Google Drive, um, which is exciting stuff. Okay, so y'all probably know this, but to get to your Google Drive, just to make sure we're all on the same page, you can go to drive.google.com. You can bookmark it if you are logged into your Gmail account. Um, it will just hook you in automatically. If you're not logged in, it will push you through that UNCG shibboleth login, right, um, through the UNCG stuff, and then it will be there as well. Um, so Rachel's dropping links in the chat so you can follow along with me. So I do think it's kind of, you know, I think probably a lot of us have already looked into our drive, but I did want to point out some features um, that could be useful depending on how you do your workflow, right? Um, so you can go to my drive and immediately create new stuff, right? So we're going to go over docs and Google Slides. Um, we're not going to talk about sheets and details today. We are going to talk about forms, but notice there's more um, and we don't even have time to even go through this, but if you have any questions, there's all this other stuff as well. You can create your own maps, drawings, um, app scripts. I do have a little bit of stuff about that. And then add-ons. Lucidchart is an add-on you can do to create um, flowcharts. Um, and again, you can ask me about that if you want. And then you can connect more apps as well. Um, you can also go up here and change your view. Um, you know, Google tries to be very adaptable to how you might work. So notice I could switch to a more like uh, grid view and then go back to a more list view. Um, it does put things in alphabetical order, which is nice, but you can change it, right? If your brain doesn't work that way. Uh, so, and you can star things, right? Share things, um, all that stuff. If you right click, there's tons of options as well to folders, documents. This is all the same no matter what you're doing things on. So you can add a shortcut to things. You can move, um, star it to have it show up um, under your starred stuff easily. You can share, get link. Um, notice that when you get link on anything at you at um, whether it's a doc, a slide, a sheet, anything you're using in Google, it does limit you to restricted. And then you click on the little arrow and then you can immediately change to UNCG and then anyone with the link. Uh, if you have a personal Gmail account, it would just be anyone with a link or within um, your personal Gmail. Those are your two options. Note, you can always click on, um, you know, the settings once it is shareable. Um, you also can send feedback to Google. I have been in focus groups with Google who, when they have come to UNCG, um, and they said that they do read this and that they do really want you to do it. So uh, take advantage of this feature. And they said they are, con that's how they do all their updates. So little pro tip, uh, take advantage of sending them feedback. There are teams of people who read this. Um, so again, the nice thing about Google is that because they are this huge for-profit company, right, they all work the same way. So everything I'm showing you will work the same, whether you're in docs, sheets, or slides. Um, notice over here, you can see priority. Um, the suggested is somewhat new in the last couple of years, and it's stuff that you have opened up recently, right? So if you like restart your computer, the stuff that you've recently opened up will show up here at the top. Um, we have unlimited storage within Google Drive here. Um, keep that in mind. And then you can also go over here and link to your calendar and task. Um, Rachel is going to talk in detail about calendar, but notice it is integrated with your guide automatically. And 
think that's the main stuff. See, this is all the same stuff with right click. Um, the last thing is that if you click on these Google apps at the top, this is how you can get to your screens on all the different Google apps. So if I wanted to go to slides and see all the slides that I owned in this again, visual list type of thing um, in display, then here it is. So here is where all my slides live and I could switch it to A to Z. I could do a file picker. I could do a list view, um, whatever, again, however your brain works. Note that when you go into these different things, they also give you a template gallery, um, which it includes if you go into the doc option as well. Uh, so definitely take advantage of your templates that you could use. Um, we do mention the usefulness of templates, uh, but going to these views of the individual apps can kind of help you think through that in these ways. See, essay template, report template, um, MLA, uh, all different kinds of things. Okay, so that's just a main overview of Drive. The last thing I wanted to mention about Drive um, in terms of just the overall layout of Drive is that you do have um, a shared Drive option and then a shared folder option. So a lot of times committees um, can, you know, they'll share a folder with you, right? So like I'm on an executive committee with ACRL, Dole's Distance and Online Learning section. Here is our folder. You can see the shared. You can see that I'm not the owner who's been modifying it, so on and so on. But there is an option that is, again, somewhat new within the last five years or so where you can create drives for groups of people. So you can see here if I go to my shared drives, this is where all my shared drives live. They are in a different place than my drive, um, which is also different than if someone individually shares a document with you or a folder with you. Um, so again, if you're like me, or maybe you don't have the most organized file naming system, um, these are good places to look. Um, if you're in a shared drive, the idea that these being created were that, um, you know, if I were to say leave UNCG and, you know, uh, uh, I, my email address shuts down for some reason very quickly, then these create multiple owners. Whereas if I created a Google folder, right, then those just go away with my email address. Um, saying that, again, these put it in a different place, and then the way you can share this information is different. Uh, so I found that when they were first coming out, you know, people were creating these shared drives all the time. Um, and again, I feel like they're kind of losing popularity. But you can see Faculty Senate has one. Um, so on and so on. So it just depends on the group, but just all these different places where you could look for stuff. And of course, this nice search function that if you're like someone like uh, Anna, I know who's helped me with this and has a really great file naming convention, uh, you can easily find your stuff with your with your very organized file naming convention. Any questions about Drive? Okay. So then the next thing we're going to talk about is um, I'm going to make go back to my slides, make sure I covered everything in terms of here. Um, we're going to go into docs and slides. And so these are used all the time. So we're really going to talk about, again, how you could use them for your workflow versus using them for um, interactive stuff in your instruction or at a conference, we're really talking about it in terms of how we use them at work. Uh, so the pros of what Rachel mentioned, right? It's cloud-based, they're easy to collaborate on. Um, you can also create interactive meetings with them, interactive sessions. Um, they're easy to share links. As I showed you, you can have multiple editors on them on the internet at the same time. So they're great for like working documents that you're all working on together, write, writing together, um, any kind of group projects like that, um, group workflows. Um, and then there's lots of templates. So take advantage of it for both docs and slides. So the only cons that I could think of, and y'all are welcome to put more in the chat that uh, I don't think of, is that it's cloud-based. So it works best with an internet connection. There are ways you can download um, Google Slides into PowerPoint, right, or as a solid document or as a PDF. Uh, but really the best way they work with all the features is online. So if you don't have an internet connection, if your internet goes out, that is a huge uh, con of it. And it doesn't have all the formatting options of Word or even PowerPoint. Um, and really a lot of the like extra stuff, right, that maybe PowerPoint and Word gives you um, that not connected to the internet is that you have to add add-ons to format it in those ways. 
Okay, so here's some like uh, workflow ideas specifically for Google Docs and Drive before we go into slides and docs and y'all can ask me questions too, is that you can create a shared drive or folder with a committee or project. We talked about that. So right clicking and then adding in editors is how you would do that. And you can always remove people or add people as a project changes. You can make copies of Google Docs that work well for you. So if you have an agenda, right, let's say for a committee that you're on or for a project and you're like, I love the way I've structured this agenda. It makes sense for everyone. All you have to do is go to file, make a copy, and then just change it by the change the title and the date, and it stays in the same folder, and it also shares it with the same people. Um, so again, take advantage of these Google Doc templates that you can see from doc.google.edu or from slides.google.edu, and then this link right here takes you to a full page of templates as well. Um, so of course, I mentioned this, but you can create agendas, right, to-do lists, things like that, and then you can create an editable link so everyone that you're working with um, can see it and add to it as things come up and help you take notes on the same document. Again, great for this collaborative work. And then leading a large meeting or doing a presentation at a conference, you can have group activities in Google Docs or Slides. There is a limit of 100 people per document. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're at a really large webinar or with a large group of people um, in that way. Yeah. So Jenny mentioned the shared ULVLC folder. Um, Rachel said, I didn't know there's a limit. Yeah, I um, have to, I help with national webinars and many people don't know there's a limit. Yeah. And that's part of how Jamboard exists. Um, they have a 500 person limit. Last I checked. I don't know if it's changed. We're going to talk a little bit about um, that. So there's more stuff here that you can do with Google Docs and workflows. Um, again, we really try to focus in on workflows and uh, how you develop stuff for work. Okay, so now we're going to go into Google Slides on the back end. So again, we um, are assuming that most of us are pretty familiar with how this works. So we're just going to show you some extra features that you might not know about, um, as well as give you time to ask this group of people questions. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, so I am in a Google Slide, right, which again, you can get to from your own account and create your own from slides.google.com um, and it just hooks you to your uncg account so all of this stuff is pretty standard again we probably all know about it but notice this is the add-on field um, so you can get add-ons and manage your add-ons here uh, if you click on get add-ons <coughs> excuse me they give you some suggestions so here is the lucid chart one that I have um, that helps it with diagramming and flow charts. Um, so again, I have that one. And then there's also I have grapple slides. Um, so grapple slides is what I was talking about where you can check for accessibility features. Um, so if you want to look for it, you just go to get add ons and search search for grapple. Um, and then when I turn it on, I can just go now to my add ons grapple slides launch. <coughs> And then there it is. And then I can go to, sorry, Grapple Slides. How do I turn it on? Tools. Do you have to refresh? Grapple Slides launch. Usually I just click that and it opens up on the right over here. And then usually it will say like insert, get add-ons, manage add-ons. So I don't know what's going on, but usually you click um, launch and it shows up over here on the right. And then it will show you how it goes on each slide. Um, so I don't know. But that's how it typically works. And it, um, okay, so Rachel said that hers isn't working either. So maybe just something's going on with Grapple Slides. Um, any tip or anything like that is that you can always uninstall and reinstall. Um, you know, so I'm going to say uninstall app. Um, usually this works pretty quickly depending on how your internet's working. And then you can reinstall and then try again. Um, that's a trick um, also coming back later. Like earlier, I couldn't do any of my stuff. Um, and uh, it uh, had to then reinstall install at that level. So, but notice you can also do a lot of interactive stuff, right? Um, so um, it's not allowing me to install by admin. So maybe they took it away. Who can say? I'll talk to 
uh, error. Maybe something happened. But usually it's very useful. It's over here. I thought it was click wrapped approved. ITS recommended it to me. Um, so maybe something's going on. But that is where you add on add ons. And again, that's a good example too. And make sure you check on the add on. Um, here is a pull everywhere add on that I installed. Notice that is its own tab. Um, so once I'm logged into pull everywhere, I can add polls directly to Google Slides as well. Um, so other polling features work within there as well. So another thing I wanted to show you all in Google Slides that can be useful is that you can um, go to something called presenter view. So if you have multiple browsers, right, you can have your like notes showing up. Um, um, you can have speaker notes that would show up right as you're presenting, um, but you can also go to a tab called audience tools when you're in speaker tool and create an audience Q&A. So now y'all see on my screen, right, this um, app this link. Um, so if you go to this, um, it accepts questions from UNCG. I just switched it to anyone. So again, even outside of UNCG now could take this. So if you go to there, it creates a uh, kind of like ask questions on the back end, like a Q&A feature that um, Zoom has on those large webinars. And then I could choose to present questions as they come in. Um, so that's a nice feature uh, if that is interesting to you. Um, as well. So y'all could go there. So Rachel just asked a question, right? So I could present it while I'm doing it and then you see it there. And then people can like or dislike it as well. And then you can even set it so that the ones that are liked the most are pushed to the top. So that's a little extra feature of um, that. Okay, let me get out of, I'm, are y'all seeing my speaker view? I'm on one monitor today. I was hoping y'all would see it, but I just like- Yeah, no, so we did, yeah. Okay, good, that is what I wanted. Okay, so there's also a feature within um, slides. Um, exit out of this. You can click while you're presenting on slides, right? And open up speaker notes, turn on laser pointer, enter full screen, stop presenting, autoplay. And you can also turn on captions. Um, so when I turn on captions, they just show up automatically at the bottom. Um, and it works really well too if you have multiple presenters because it feeds um, from the same one. But again, my computer can sometimes be funky with that. Um, but again, it's a nice feature if you need the captioning while you're presenting live. This also works in Google Meet, which we're not gonna talk about in detail, but they have a captioning service for their um, virtual meeting tool as well. Okay, I think that's the main things I wanted to show you. Um, what I've noticed with students lately, and um, again, anyone can uh, say their opinions about this, is that they're using Canva a lot. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, maybe people are getting kind of tired of the Google slide um, deal, but I will say in terms of collaborating with partners um, and sharing links and the ease of how it displays, um, I have found Google Slides to be a little bit easier. I have seen some funky formatting stuff with Canva um, when people present their slides. Um, and then uh, they do a lot more for-profit stuff. So a lot, be careful of like watermarks and things like that. Okay. So I wasn't gonna go into docs unless people really have a lot of questions or concerns about docs. Um, again, the template's nice, right? Um, but let's say, you can see all my current ones. Um, so I can open, I'm trying to open up one that is fine to like having a recording. I'm on an anti-racism group um, for ACRL. So I think this is fine for y'all to see and being in a recording. Uh, but notice here again, same deal, right? Add-ons. Um, Zotero as an add-on shows up over here automatically and then so on and so on. Again, if you don't have any questions, I just didn't want to go. I just figured we're all kind of at least probably somewhat familiar. The big thing I see people have issue with with Google Docs is sharing. Uh, just make sure you're sharing from that button and not the URL at the top. You can see then um, who is on it and then add people and then you can change, right? Right now, these are set to anyone on the internet can edit. Uh, you click change and you can change it, right, to uh, whatever you prefer. There's also an option on Google Docs um, that you can uh, publish them online for anyone to find through Google. Um, and uh, then it adds it into search engine optimization where people could uh, Google, you know, ACRL Dole's anti-racism task force and find you that way as well. Okay, 
So that's my basics about that. Are there any questions, ideas, um, comments, concerns before we move on to the next thing? Okay, so the next thing is Google Sites. Um, I'm not gonna harp on this too much. Um, their websites, right? It's their new, they're sometimes, they're still sometimes called new Google site, but the old one is totally going away. Um, Michelle Courtney did a great presentation about how she migrated uh, the old behind the stacks BTS to the new Google sites. Um, so that's a great recording if you kind of want to see what that means and what that takes. Um, so some pros of creating a website on Google sites versus other stuff, let's say like Wix um, or something like that. It's very easy to use and approved from UNCG. Right. Um, so it integrates well with other Google apps. So if you have like stuff you want to add from YouTube, uh, Google Docs, Google Slides, etc. It works really well. Um, the cons are that there's not many design or coding options. So really, you have to choose from their set of templates. Right. And then go from there. Um, it also creates a super long URL or, you know, longer than I like for um, getting to websites simply. But remember, you can once you publish it, uh, put it within go links to shorten it. They are kind of set up to be used within UNCG, so just make careful that if you are publishing it for the general public, uh, that you're really paying attention to your publish and your share settings. So here's some examples. I'm not going to harp on it, um, and I didn't want to put behind the stacks here in case it couldn't be in a recording, uh, but y'all know about behind the stacks and the great uh, job that Michelle did with that uh, migration. But here's an example of a programming that I do with the graduate school that is available for the public on UNCG webinars worth watching, uh, where it's, again, it's just really nice for informational. It's easy to use, easy to set up. Um, I mean, I made this website in like an hour and then created a Go link, right, where I I can just easily go to it by clicking in this go link and it pops me to the same page. Notice it's that I can click edit and then the editing field looks just like a lot of other Google apps and it's really easy to use and gives you all the options right here. It's very mobile friendly and shows you how it looks within all the different mobile devices, um, which is very important for accessibility um, in those ways so you can check it and make sure it works. Um, and then so on and so on. So then you have your publishing fields, you can easily add collaborators. Um, it's very simple and easy to use. So just to show another example, um, Maggie used it for uplifting memes when uh, she was working on that project before COVID hit. Um, but you can see you it doesn't have to all look the same um, with a little bit of work. It can be really uh, aesthetically pleasing. I feel like hers is much better designed than my very simple webinars worth watching, right? And um, you can see again, um, another example of how it could be this great thing to easily make a website. So all stuff is that anything like this where you're publishing online for everyone to see, we do you know, recommend that you talk to your supervisor, talk to Eric um, and make sure that it doesn't need to live somewhere else on the website. Uh, but again, we, you can see here, these are examples of how you can easily create one for programming, right? That then could be taken down later or shifted uh, based on how the programming changes. So hopefully that helps think through maybe a way that you could think about maybe using Google Sites for a workflow. Um, again, committees use it, faculty senates used it. Um, I've seen the library use it to create like collection repositories. I've had LIS grad students use it to create um, collection samples of like YA books we have, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a nice, easy thing to use. Okay, Rachel. Now we're on you for Google Forms, and I'm going to stop sharing so you can share. Perfect. Can you see my yep, I see it perfectly. Thing? Let me just pull up the chat. Cool. OK, Google Forms. I love Google Forms. So um, Google Forms is a really natural tool, I think, for things like teaching. Um, but we want to talk about how you could maybe improve some of your you know, day to day work with it. So the pros, certainly it is free and easy to use. Um, you get to keep the data that you create. You know, it is stored. Um, I can show you how that works, where it stores it, and how you can get a copy of it easily. Very easy to share and collaborate. Um, <clears throat> the cons of this, be careful about sh who you share forms with outside of UNCG. Um, this one, I, I also would kind of caution the opposite as well. Like you want to make sure that um, you have your form settings right, because if people have to log in to uh, fill out your form, I think just from my personal experience, they're less likely to actually fill it out. Um, there are long URLs, but we've talked about how to create Go links. Um, and the design customization is limited. Yeah, it it is 
I feel like it's gotten somewhat better, but yes, it is still quite, there's not all that much you can do to make your forms pretty. So here's just a couple ideas of how you could potentially use Google Forms in your day-to-day -day work, even if you're not doing teaching. So you could take a quick poll either during a meeting or before or after to maybe get some feedback on ideas. Um, you could create up a shine up sheet, a shine up sign up sheet for shifts or projects um, for people to like show interest availability. Maybe if your department's considering doing one project or another, you could have people vote and like prioritize how they, you know, might be interested in doing it. Peer reviews, it, it can work well. We've used it for some of that in the past in ROI um, when people need to leave feedback on uh, our interns. They use it, yeah, it's, it's nice. And we use it, yeah, our student workers apply to be ROI interns through Google Forms, absolutely. Event registration is great, U of VLC uses it. Um, I like it because you can make your form um, so that it won't collect the information about the people who are uh, filling it out. And I encourage you, if you want honest feedback, if you want people to be maybe a little bit more forthright, um, make your poll anonymous. So um, sharing Google Forms and results, I'm going to show you how to do it. So if you're in your Google Drive and you click new, and then Google Forms is the purple one, and we are going to create a poll together about a topic that's very important to me, pets. Um, so you can see when I title it up here, it changes the title here, form description. You could just give people some quick instructions. Choose the best pet. What is the best pet? And yeah, what is the best pet? So we could do dogs. Yes, Bootsy gets his own line. Um, other random cats, fish, chickens, I happen to know about, right? And I, you know, you can make it multiple choice, but because there are many pets that are worthy of recognition, perhaps you want to make it a checklist. Um, you can do things like, let's do another question. How great are pets? We can make this a Likert scale. Um, although I've heard some people call it a Likert scale. I don't like that as much. I'm going to call it a Likert scale. They're not great. They're so great, okay. And if you're confused about how that might show up or like want to test it out, you can always click preview and it will show you so you can see how it's going to look to your users. Yes, Rico, also very, very important, Rico. Um, so you can make questions required or not required. Um, making them required makes it so that someone cannot click the submit button without answering that question. Um, you can also do things like adding titles, like often I'll do this, general questions, like a, just a, a header for your section. You can also make it so that for different form questions, like sets of questions appear on different pages if you want to have your form be multiple pages. And I don't know how people feel about this. I typically don't like that because I like to be able to see what I'm going to be expected to fill out in terms of a form and not be like partway through the survey before I realize that, oh, I've got to write an, an essay question or something, right? Um, so let's, now that we have our form, I don't want to spend too long on this. I could literally do a whole session on forms. Maybe I should. You could choose, uh, I, I pushed a little palette and it allows me to choose an image for my header and it has a bunch of them built in. You can play with these over here. I really enjoy messing with these. Um, Oh, I didn't know that percent of form completed so people know how much is left to fill out. I like that. The multiple page thing still really gives me anxiety, but that might provide me some comfort. Um, when you're ready to share, go to settings. And if you want this to only be viewable um, to people who are at UNCG, it, this option is automatically selected for you. So if you only want this to be able to to people who have a UNCG login, leave it as is. If this was something you were gonna share with people outside UNCG or you didn't want them to have to log in, I do this all the time with students um, because I know that if students hit something that says log in and I'm trying to do a poll with them in class, they're gonna be like, nope, not doing it. Or it'll take them 20 minutes to get logged in. So I tend to turn this off. Um, you can also edit if people you want, if you want them to have the opportunity to submit multiple responses, you can create a custom confirmation message. You'll see how this works in a minute when we take this poll. 
show progress bar. Very cool. I'm going to try that like Sean suggested. There are all kinds of defaults that you can play with. Just know that collect email addresses by, fault, by default uh, makes it so that you have to have people log in, I believe. Okay, so I'm gonna share this poll and I click send and I could either send this to people via email and it would just send them an email invitation or if I'm in a class or a meeting, you can shorten the URL by the way. I'm gonna copy this URL and share it with you all. I'm dying to see what your answers are to our pets poll. So if you'll take that poll for me, that would be great. One thing that I like about doing this when I'm in um, classes or presentations is that if I am logged in as the creator, I can just share my screen and show people live results as they come in. So we've got some, let's see, there are 11 of us and I'm not going to take the poll. So I'm going to wait until we're at like maybe eight responses. Did I make Rachel, it a check? Mm -hmm. Have you noticed how they changed it? Did you show this and I was just dazing out, but like they changed huh? it for how you share outside of UNCG and I hate it. I hate change. Yeah, you have to, so, now you have to turn that off. You have to turn I, it off. I hate it. <laughs> I wish yes. there was just a way we could like be like, assume I don't want it on. Be you like, know, no. because very rarely do I want it on. Um, yes. Oh, I made yeah. settings so I could submit multiple times. You're right. So if you have really strong opinions on pets. So, okay, dogs are the best pet. I do agree with that. But Bootsy and Rico are dear to me. No one voted for chickens. You're all dead to me. Um, <laughs> but I also want to show you add-ons. So let's say that you, okay, I'll show you an example. If you are like me and you work with thousands of students every academic year and all of them are submitting uh, Google Forms, like this semester, I've got 380 responses on this. I wanted to know when I got a certain number of uh, responses so that I would know when to go in and check on this. So I have, there's something called add-ons and you click form notifications, open, and you can have it notify you when a certain number of responses have been received on a form. So for me, every 10 times someone fills out this form or different, you know, obviously different people fill out this form, um, I receive a notification to my email, which is helpful. Um, it's also, if you're someone like me who has a great deal of anxiety around like, did people fill out my form? Um, you can turn those on and that way save yourself from having to check the form every, every five minutes only to be disappointed. Oh, you get emails for every ULVLC, yes. I would do that, honestly, if I was doing ULVLC setups. So that's Google Forms. Does anybody have questions about this? <coughs> Excuse me. Or um, any suggestions on how you might use Google Forms in a way we haven't talked about yet? One trick, Rachel, is with Google Forms, I also like, you go to the settings, you can you can export it into Excel because I like to oh, use yeah. Excel more than Thank I do you. like Google Form Docs. So you open it, mm -hmm. open it up, the responses, export to Excel. That's right. And then you can do a lot more manipulation and data data diagnosis. Thank you. I promised to talk about that and promptly forgot. So if you're in responses and let's say you wanted to kind of do some stuff with this, you could click create spreadsheet. And it will create a Google Sheet for you, which essentially works the same as Excel. And then you could have all kinds of lines here where you could manipulate, sort, um, filter, do all that good stuff. Yes, that is a great point. That is essential to how I use it in my own workflow. Excellent. So let's talk about my absolute number one favorite Google tool, which is Google Calendar. I, y'all, I don't have a religion. If I did, it would be Google Calendar because I love it that much. Okay, so <clears throat> here's my Google Calendar. As you can see, tomorrow is a mess. Um, so let me just talk through it very briefly before I get ahead of myself. It's I love it because it's easy to schedule meetings. It has now Zoom and Google Meet integration so that you can schedule your, um, if you're doing a video meeting, you can put that right in. You don't have to do it separately and anymore. Um, it's super easy to add things like agendas, attachments, links, anything you want. Um, the cons, and I mean this in the spirit of kindness, not everyone uses Google Calendar and not everyone uses it well. Um, and that can be if you are someone like me who is a little bit for lack of a better word, anal about Google Calendar and having everything nice and neat in Google Calendar, that can be um, 
exciting sometimes to to deal with. So yes, this can be a big struggle. Yes, when you're scheduling meetings across campus, because not like I said, not everyone uses it. Um, so you'll ask people like, okay, let's schedule this important meeting with 20 of us. Um, and not everybody uses Google Calendar. And all of a sudden, you have to create a doodle poll. So um, let's create an event. I love events. Let's do it. Okay, so the first question is finding a time that works for everyone. So let us practice. When you're in Google Calendar, calendar.google.com, click a time slot, important meeting regarding pets. And I click more options. And this is going to take you to the detail view. I am now going to attempt to find a time. I'm sure this will be fascinating that works for everyone in this room. Am I gonna individually enter all of our names? Yes, I am, because that's how much I love this tool. I'm entering all the guests that I want to be there. Jenny Dale, Anna Craft, Kathy Griffith. I'm sure that there will be no time when we're available until sometime next year. Christine and Kathy are. Okay, so it shows you our availability as a group. Um, it's got some times blocked off. If people have set their working hours, you can certainly do that um, to let people know in your settings when your typical working hours are so that no one tries to schedule a meeting with you um, on Saturday at 2 p.m. Right. Oh, wow. We have more availability than I thought. How exciting. Um, so you could choose a blank spot. Um, and now that you've got that, you could go back to event details. I could choose to make this Google Meet or a Zoom meeting. I far prefer Zoom. So I'm gonna click make a Zoom meeting. And if you have this set up, if you don't, I'm happy to show you. If you have this set up, um, you just click continue and it gives you a nice Zoom link. Okay, so we found a time. Where will it be held? Zoom, we did it. There's also a feature, if you are meeting in person or wanting to meet in person, you can search the name of buildings on campus. Jackson Library, it shows me rooms that I can reserve. Um, it, this is particularly important for us um, in like the admin room. So if you wanted to meet in 216, for example, you could click 216 um, and I think it will only show up if it's available. Yes, available rooms only. So apparently 216 was available. So that's where we're gonna meet. Perfect. We're gonna have a hybrid meeting, I guess, because we have a Zoom link. Is there an agenda? If, there, if you had an agenda created, especially one in Google Drive, you could put in the link to it there. Um, if you are someone who prefers to create agendas in Word and share them, um, let's talk because let's improve your workflow. Um, you could potentially upload them from your computer or pick from Google Drive and it would automatically be in the event. Do we need to read or view anything in advance? Um, let's see if I wanted you to read about puppies ahead of our meeting. I could link to that and you could see that. Um, who will take notes? How will the notes be shared and stored? You can create meeting notes by clicking create meeting notes and it will automatically create a document um, related to your meeting and it will, I'm going to save this so you all get the invite. Please don't show up for this meeting. Um, but if you go into it and I want to see the agenda, take notes potentially, it, it loads it in for you, adds the date, adds the all the information, including attendees, and it sets up spots for notes and action items. So I truly love this so much. So, okay, that's Google Calendar. Again, I could do an entire hour on Google Calendar. Does anyone have questions, any features about it? There are many that I didn't have a chance to talk about that you would like to see, or any questions that you have about setting things up? The, the only thing I would add that I have found useful for like, you know, like you're having like multiple team leaders or whatever mm -hmm. is that you can set multiple, like you could say, um, you know, like you're the host, you're the organizer on that. You could set that someone else is the organizer as well. Anna, uh, you are, oh, oh, Mark required. Oh no, I hate that. Yeah, don't do oh, that. I know. But you know what I mean? Like <laughs> oh. it would be other things. So. Okay, I'm gonna, I don't know how to, I hope that I made this optional, Anna, and it doesn't like make Well, and you can go down there to guest permissions, <laughs> modify. Yeah, modify okay. it. There you go. Yeah. Um, so I like prefer. I think someone wants to cancel or change or add their own agenda or whatever. 
I prefer strongly to be able to see the guest list. Um, I know that's not something that everybody does, but I, I really, it helps me mentally just to know who to prepare for. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. I use it for work frequently because I do a lot of teaching. Yeah, I don't want meeting surprises. Like if I don't know, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I have to know when Sam is gonna be in a meeting with me so I can like prepare. No, just kidding. Um, it's helpful. Uh, okay, my YouTube channel. I love it because you can easily share things with people. In ROI, we tend to get a lot of questions like, how do I find a scholarly article? How do I do this thing? And I find myself explaining the same skill over and over. So I will very often create videos on how to do a particular thing. So for instance, I created a video on using psych info. My videos are not super high quality. If you want help making high quality videos, talk to Samantha Harlow. Um, but I like it because you can just quickly kind of make a make a quick screen grab of yourself doing something, upload it to the YouTube channel. And then when students ask me questions, I give them some advice, also follow it up with just copy and paste this YouTube video that shows you how to do the steps, um, which I find super helpful. Playlists have been really important for me actually, because I like um, being able to, not only my videos, but videos that I save, um, I can kind of curate things a little bit. I can kind of, um, I lost my train of thought, sorry. I can kind of manipulate it a little bit. Um, you can also do things like unlisted videos. So these are um, ROI intern trainings that we do. And oops, hi, there's Abby's face. Um, I keep them here as unlisted videos so only someone who has the link can view it. So if you're doing a meeting recording and you want it to be stored somewhere that's not your desktop or someone's email address or something um, like hidden in someone's inbox, you could potentially store it on YouTube as an unlisted link. That way it is still private to the people that you want to be able to see it. Um, and there's a lot you can do YouTube has what they call the creator studio. And you can potentially can go in here, three people subscribe to my YouTube channel, just saying. Um, you can see your top videos, you can see um, summaries, you can look at stats, things like that. You can see all the videos that you have, you can make changes to them, um, just kind of a quick view here. Um, there is significant, more that you could do here than I would ever have time to talk about. But that's like the basics. Um, pros and cons of YouTube, easy sharing, storage, presentation materials can be linked in descriptions. That's right. You could put an entire, um, if I wanted to put the link to some slides or a basic description of, of who did what here, um, yeah, I could put it here. Um, it is mobile friendly. There's a YouTube app. Most of us probably have it on our phones. Um, the cons, the Google's auto captioning feature is not great. Um, and if you need to, when you record, like this meeting is being recorded in Zoom. So later on, when Jenny and Sam want to upload it to the um, library's YouTube channel, they'll download it and they'll upload what's called a VTT file, which will come with it. Um, you'll need to correct those. And the correction process is maddening to me. And there is somewhat of a learning curve, but it can be useful. And we don't have much time, so I'm gonna race through this. Um, workflow ideas, try hosting professional development sessions with your department, storing it on YouTube. If you are a note taker for a meeting and maybe you missed part of it, or um, I don't know, something happened, you could potentially use that as a reference to correct notes or minutes. And then um, you could specifically restrict who can see specific videos. Any questions about YouTube? Okay, well, real quick, I'm gonna, Sam, do you want me to pass the sharing back over to you for some extras? You can just keep it because these okay. are really extras. Um, okay. So, you know, like Rachel mentioned throughout the whole thing, it's um, impossible. We could do probably a hour long session on each of these apps. And the idea mm -hmm. of this was to quickly cover ways that we have thought and that you know, professionals have thought about using these for efficient workflows. So, cause we wanted it to be not just about instruction. Um, so these are like more information, right? Like, you know, Gmail of course is 
integral and probably the one I use the most, right? That I mm -hmm. tend to sometimes forget is an app, but there's tons of things you can do with Gmail um, that again, we could have a whole hour long session on just Gmail. And some of them include filters and tasks. Um, and Rachel's gonna, Rachel has some links too about creating groups within there as well. Um, so for example, I think like uh, Christine, you do that, right? With like liaisons, getting our budget reports, um, right? And then you can just go in there. It's like a listserv but with your contacts. So there's a lot of different things. And then filters means like if you're getting tons of stuff about like I get tons of, I'm on like a lot of OER listservs. Um, you could create a filter that just sends all of those into a folder for you to read later. So they're not taking up time in your inbox. Um, bye, Anna. Um, and then Google Sheets, we didn't have time to talk about it today. We kind of featured it in terms of how it works with Google Forms, but of course it works almost identical to Excel and it's cloud-based, right? And it also has a lot of add-ons and you can also work with something called app scripts to do visualizations of data within um, Google Sheets, as well as of course, the stuff that we can do in Excel, right? Create charts um, more in that way. Um, so again, keep that in mind. If you have Excel spreadsheets that you're also using, they can be uploaded within Sheets and shared that way. And you can play around with add-ons for data visualization in that way. I'm sure you could also talk to Joe, our data out of the visualization librarian and they could talk about um, different ways to use it as well. So Google Chats um, is, you know, one that I assume a lot of us are already using. You can go to chat.google.com and you can chat anyone in your contacts over on the left. You can see if people are set as a way available, um, that kind of stuff. You can also create groups within Google Chat. So like, for example, we do have two groups within ROI. We have an ROI chat you know, to talk about chat issues, and then an ROI like liaison um, team one where we can talk about things that are coming up for overall OER. So it just works a lot like Slack. You can like stuff, put emojis on stuff. You can upload images, emojis, GIFs, things like that. Um, it also integrates with your Gmail, all the other things, so it can be on the side while you're doing that. Um, and then, of course, Google Meet. You know, Rachel um, mentioned, you know, that you can integrate that with Calendar and create virtual meetings, but um, do know that like I mean I think Rachel noted this and you know it's really a preference like most people really prefer zoom we're in zoom right now it just has a lot more features but Google I mean it does it's always improving uh, so they actually had captions before zoom had captions for example on um, those automatic um, captions yeah it doesn't have the like beauty feature that Rachel just mentioned that Zoom has an automatic uh, beauty filter. Uh, so um, I don't, you know, take that as you will. Sometimes I like go into Google Meet and I'm like, whoa, I forgot that Zoom does this other thing with the lighting and everything. Um, Google Meet didn't used to have background options and now they do. So again, they are constantly improving. Uh, and just to give you a heads up in case you get um, a meeting request with a Google Meet. I know like when I meet with people in ITS, they like Google Meet. They're always sending me Google Meet invites. So just to be aware, that's what it is. Um, and then the next one, Rachel, you did this one. Yeah, I'll just very quickly talk through some of these. Jamboard, love a Jamboard. I'm gonna send you a link real quick. You can play with this if you want to. Um, this is basically a way to do collaboration in a visual way. It could be note-taking, it could be um, if you wanted to, I'm going to add an image of a puppy to this Jamboard. Oh my goodness, I can't handle it. We could, hey everyone, I have opinions, love that. Um, you could potentially, um, Sean, you should have access if you're logged in with your UNCG account. I got it, I was opening up in a different account. We could draw something. You could add a sticky note, love, whoa, love dogs. You get the idea. It's kind of a nice visual way to uh, share, collaborate, take notes. I love it. Google Contacts <coughs> is great. For instance, I have 110 plus faculty that I'm responsible for supporting their research. Um, I have them all listed as Google Contacts. So when I want to send them an email, like I did earlier today, I can just type the name of that list, which is all liaisons right here, and it will automatically put all 110 of them into the, um, like, it'll send it to them, uh, which can save you oodles and boodles of time. So I highly recommend um, groups and labels within your Google contacts. Happy to help you with that if anyone has questions. And just real, real fast, Google Keep, which I rarely ever use, as you can tell, is basically like 
sticky notes for yourself um, within Google. And it's it's interesting because from your inbox, you could click on the Google Keep icon and you could see here's your little sticky note. So I think of it as like sticky notes on your screen um, if you're into that sort of thing. So that's kind of fun. Um, interested in what your favorite Google Suite tools are. And then if you have questions, we will gladly take them. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Yeah, and just to reemphasize, you know, Rachel and I, well, Rachel's really good at Google Apps, but like we're not, at, you know, the Google admins on campus. So just be on the lookout for um, updates from ITS. Um, if you go to workshops.uncg.edu, they do, that is the ITS supported workshops. Um, they are offering now in person and online. Uh, so be on the lookout. They might be doing one like fully on Excel um, versus Sheets, right? That kind of thing. Um, so uh, we are not, just to be clear for this recording, because it's going to go on a Google product. We don't own Google. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know, Rachel, I don't know. Maybe you secretly own a piece of Google. I don't. Um, not if I did. If I did, I wouldn't work here. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I think that's a different kind of job. Um, okay, questions, concerns. We, we uh, had a lot to cover, so three minutes left, but also we can end it. I have a question. Yes. Um, okay, let's just use an example of a um, Google Drive folder yes. for the University Libraries Awards Committee. Yes. All right. So um, we might have an, another folder for one, uh, like we'll have a 2021 folder and a 2022 yep. folder. Yep. But if you but if you set up the drive, everybody has access. Mm -hmm. Um, so if, even if you create a folder inside it, they all have access yeah. because on the drive level. We're all so, owners. Pardon? So the what I would do, and Rachel, you can jump in, anyone can jump in, is that I would create a regular folder within my Google Drive, not a drive, not a separate drive. Because the idea of the drives is that we're all owners, we're all co-owners, and there's not a lot of settings beyond that. So if you create a folder, right, Christine, you can then create a folder within a folder and then each folder can have its own share, right? So you would share with the first committee, uh, the next year you would put a new committee on there, right? But you do have to have one owner. So, I mean, you know, maybe that's Jennifer. Um, well, well, actually Steve started, um, mm -hmm. Steve was involved with the beginning of this. So, so I think, in fact, you're right. It's not a drive, it's a folder. Yeah. But I'm not sure, but yeah, but we <laughs> don't, Okay, I'll, I can talk to him too if I, because if, I, I thought everything, everybody who's currently on it would be able to use it. Yeah, so here's, I'm in my drive, right? So I'm going to create a folder, right? Oh, I didn't mean to do upload. New folder. Google did not like that I was just trying to upload something. Okay, so new folder, right? Uh, I'm going to call it test. Um, and so here it is, right? So now I'm the only owner of this. And then I can create another folder. If I could type, this would help. Uh, 2022, right? And then within here, I can right click share, right? And then I'm adding people. And then the next folder would have different share settings. Okay. And that's why, yeah, what Rachel says, I don't recommend using team and then share drive. The problem with share drives is that you're all equal owners, which can be good depending on the project, right? But then it's not good for stuff like this, right? Of terms of having to kind of move people in and out. Um, this way you're kind of setting up a folder for each year in this way. All right, thanks so much for the demo. Yeah. There are also issues with team or share drives when you want to transfer files from yes. a non shared drive to a shared drive or to a shared drive to a non, like it's just it's kind of a nightmare. Yes, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, it's a nightmare yes. because um, ACRL, we moved a lot of our stuff to uh, drives because we were like, oh great, this will be great. We're all equal owners or whatever. Yeah. But then it was like a nightmare trying to transfer back and forth between our executive folder which had different permissions, like what we're talking about, Christine. Uh, so we were like, abandon the drive. We had to make a copy 
of each thing. We had to export it and then re-upload it and like recreate the document. It was a huge pain. So mm -hmm. ever since that whole ACRL thing, I was like, drives, you're dead to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so keep that in mind. Jenny, I like, I like want to do a whole session on Google Calendar now. I like, know. that's I kind of want to do that. I love it. We can do it coming yeah. up. We, yeah. we will be happy to host that. Yes. Great. Any other questions? Come and again, like we're a group of people who all use Google. So if y'all have other things that we didn't cover that you're like, I use this all the time. Um, I mean, we're one minute over, but um, yeah. What do y'all think? Okay, I'm seeing some thanks in the chat. Um, feel free to email me. I would also say you could put in, you know, an ERIT ticket if there's anything going on with your Google Drive. Um, again, pay attention to that workshops page. You're welcome to ask me. And if I don't know or, you know, whatever, I can direct you to the right person. Um, have a great week, everyone. Um, it's Tuesday. We're making it. We're doing it. Um, have a great day, everyone. Bye.